That's a lot to live up to, but I'll do what I can. How's everybody doing? Great. Are you in the right place? Oh, yes, sir. So, <clears throat> let's see if you're in the right place. So, if I said to you that you are an expression of God, would you say, I am one? I am one. You are an expression of God. I am one. And point to somebody else and say, and you are another. And you are another. I want to personally thank you for inviting me here at Third Church today. It's been a while, and I always feel at home whenever I'm blessed enough to be of service from this esteemed podium. Thank you, Reverend Neds, both of y'all, and Reverend Gerald, for trusting me to support your holy mission of love, integrity, empowerment, education, and an ongoing celebration of life through community activities, through gatherings and classes. Yes or yes? Yes. Now you sound like you're in the right place. I join you today in order to share some ideas and concepts with you. I humbly intend to give you ideas and tools guided by the Holy Spirit through prayer, meditation, and along with concepts through focused research. My intention is threefold. Number one, to inform. Inform. To inspire, inspire and to invite. Inspire. First of all, I'm tasked to inform you, rather appropriately remind you of the undeniable presence and essence of God in you and everything else. Is that all right with you? Yes. Yes. Secondly, I wouldn't be answering my call as a spiritual teacher of metaphysics if I didn't seek to inspire you with Spirit's words through me as ideas and techniques that you can use, you can actually use them in order to transform your own experience and co-create a life of preferred choices and results. Say preferred. Preferred. So when you make preferred choices, those are choices that are in alignment with your desires, not because you think you have to. Are you with me so far? Yes. yes. And finally, since this teaching is all about self-healing, self-awareness, and self-empowerment, I can and will only offer suggestions and invite you to experiment with these principles and techniques as tools designed to help you succeed in this real thing called life. And as always, the rest is up to you. Are you with me? Yes. See, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the concept of this being uh, the male energy month because I want to expand that some more. Because we as men are dealing with our own stuff, especially men in this community. Yes or yes? Yes. But we've got to also, as men, take care of those around us. Are you with me so far? Yes. And so I want to start including everybody. I don't know if I'm in the right place, but can I include everybody? Yes. yes. All right. Are you up for a spiritual and mental adventure today? Yes. yes. Excellent. Then let's dive into what I've been told is your theme for today, my brother's keeper. Hold on to that for a second because we're going to shift it. This phrase comes from the Bible story of Cain and Abel. After Cain slew Abel, and God, and by the way, if you don't know about the Bible, you can Google it. <laughs> and God asked Cain, where is Abel? And he lied. He told a big old lie, right? And so the energy of this statement has some backstory uh, energy around it of lies, deceit, repercussions, and death. So I saw a higher understanding that would be spiritual, usable, and uplifting. Do you know what metaphysical means? Yes. It means beyond the what? Physical. And so that's why we have a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible. Because there's a higher consciousness way of doing things in this life. Yes or yes? Yes. So you name say, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So the things that are relevant in being a brother's keeper, I want to move it into an updated version. And it's twofold. The first one. First of all, the word brother is so important to this concept, which would actually be a spiritual principle, taking care of somebody else. Yes? Yes. All right. But it literally refers to males and grown men. If we simply update this concept, do I have your permission? Yes. We could choose to not use this literal form of brother as a family of blood. Instead, it could be phrased another being. Say another being. Another being. Why not include male, female, strangers, children, immigrants, gay, black, white, Hispanic, or anybody else, including plants, animals, and the earth? Because if God is all there is, we would be remiss in leaving anything out. 
Repeat after me. We may not, we may not be family by blood, be family by blood but, we but we are truly family by breath. By breath. Think about it. Take a deep breath right now. See, your breath has no color. Your breath has no age group. Breath is something we get to use while we're here. You are gifted with breath. Every time you inhale and exhale, it doesn't matter what your problem of the day is. You still got what? Breath. Because honey, when you don't, you ain't got no more problems. <laughs> and this externally mean-spirited, sometimes unfair, and often violent word in the world that we live in, being another's keeper simply means that I am committed to help all of God's creation. What part of God's creation? All. Oh. When they are in need. When, say when. When. I am appropriately aligned and spiritually led. I am appropriately aligned and spiritually led. Say I am another's keeper. I am another's keeper. Now does this mean to be another's keeper that I become a codependent uh, provider for somebody else's drama? No. Do I give up my spark of light so that they might shine? No. Or forego my health so that they can be happy? No. Say it with me, head to the note. <laughs> the beauty of metaphysical principles taught in religious science, science of mind, unity, and all, is that roots and the foundation of this stuff that we teach and that we use and that we benefit by can only work through the application of spiritual law. So you got to apply it, yes? Like you said earlier, turn to your name and say, just do it like Nike. <laughs> Mental tools such as the fives, uh, y'all know about the treatment. How many people know about treatment? I'll see if I'm in the right place. Here. Okay. I call it the five-step energy shifter. Five-step energy shifter. What is everything in life? Say energy. energy. And so when you, when you say a prayer, you're moving what? Energy. When you talk bad about yourself, you're moving what? Energy. And what you think about, you bring about. So let's look at it. Here's the problem that you're having today. Call it problem du jour. <laughs> but here's the solution you want. Way over here. How do I get to here from over there? Are you with me so far? You take those five steps. You just take five simple steps up here. Where's it all done? Up here to get over there. Right. You don't have to change your bank account. You don't have to rob a bank. Come on, somebody. Right. Just take the, turn to him and say, take five steps. Five steps. So you got the problem. The first step is you forget about the problem for a moment. It ain't going nowhere yet. And you start talking about what? The creator of all life, which is what? God. God. What are the attributes of God? Love, peace, abundance, prosperity. Come on, keep on going, yes? Now, once you've said that and understand that in your soul, yeah. then you remember that if God is all there is, hey, that stuff must be in me too. That's right. So I'm already blessed. I'm already whole. I'm already powerful. Yes? Now you get to the third step where some people trip themselves up. Because when you get to the third step, that's when you speak your word yes. for what you believe your power is. Are you with me? Yes. And so if you believe that your power is still in your problem, <laughs> what are you going to keep creating? Uh, However, if you know what you want in that solution, you start creating it in your mind and speaking it with your mouth and believing it in your heart, then that's where you're headed. Are you with me? And because of that, once you've done that powerful step, I'm trying to Y'all with me? Yes. Mechanical hiccup. I probably don't even need this. But anyway, uh, then you, you, like is it God or somebody gave you a million dollar check? What's the first thing you do after you they wake you up from passing out? <laughs> you say thank you. Then you say thank you. Thank you, God. And then you just let it go. Because now you're standing in solution. How does that feel? Good or what? Five-step energy shifter, better known as the prayer treatment, is an example of the one, one of the most powerful spiritual tools. I don't care what research you do. One of the most powerful research right now, usable tools that you can use to prepare yourself to be another's keeper. Say it with me, I'm another's keeper. I'm another's keeper. These ancient spiritual powerful mind techniques are designed to win. How? By moving creative energy through an eternal law fueled by your word and funded by your faith. Because what we think about 
and focus on always manifest in direct alignment with our intention. Say it with me. What I focus on, what I, focus on, I, manifest. I manifest. What I think about, what I, think I think about. about. What I zero in on, what I, zero I, become. I become. So are you another's keeper? Yes. If your desire is to be another's keeper, you must subscribe to the committed inner work of yes. self-awareness using your MAP protocol. What is that? Yes. MAP. Meditation, yes. affirmation, yes. and prayer. Yes. Whenever you get lost, you find you forget about your gifts. Whenever you get lost, pull out your spiritual what? MAP. What can I do here? I'm feeling out of balance. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling hurt. Well, can I meditate? Can I affirm? Can I pray? Which one of those tools? You've got it right there. Yes? yes. No yes. excuses, baby. That's right. In order to be a difference maker and a mind shaker, your own house must be in yes. order. Yes. Yes. Look, no one is perfect, especially coming from me. But as long as you are diligent about your own DSP, daily spiritual practice. What is it again? Daily spiritual practice. Not monthly. That's right. Not on Sunday. That's right. Daily. When you get up in the morning, set the intention. When you go to bed at night, give thanks. And everywhere in between, use forgiveness. Come on, somebody. Yes. Do you want to win or what? Yes. Tragedy strikes when you are not in balance with your own self-love and understanding when you say you're going to reach out to serve another. Especially while you're depleted in love and depleted in kindness. It would be like the blind leading the blind over a big old cliff. When imbalance, misunderstanding, and confusion are not healed in you, and you go to serve somebody else, it's inappropriate, self-serving, and dangerous. Yes? Yes. And so think about that. When you go to somebody else, when you feel vulnerable enough, and you've done your prayer work, and you feel like you want to you know, get some insight from somebody else, be, turn to your name and say, be spiritually careful. <laughs> Spiritually careful, because if you go to the right person and they're unplugged, they will tell you, I can't help you at this moment. Let me get myself together and come back later. Come on. Because ego will say, oh yeah, I can help you. Because I want to look good. I want, you, I want you to owe me some spiritual energy. Oh, you all don't even know what I'm talking about. Be cognizant about whom you bring into your circle. Yes or yes? Yes. It is imperative that you are vulnerable enough to say that you're not ready to serve anybody while you work on your own stuff rather than jump into a lake to save somebody else and you haven't invested in the swimming class. <laughs> Irrefutable harm can come to one who trusts and believes in someone being authentic and real, having their back and watching their sis. When in fact, there is no DSP, only EGO. <laughs> ego, you got it. When ego's involved, because ego loves drama. Conversation, you find yourself, you know, uh, all up in the drama and everything, that's your ego. Because your spirit ain't gonna have nothing to do with it. But get your name and say, but it's your choice. <laughs> We've had enough of this posturing, pretending, and pontificating in our families and in our communities. Yes or yes? yes. The change starts here and it starts today. Yes. Say it with me. I am another's keeper. I am this is my destination and my intention. I do my inner work without pause or pretension. Oh, that was good. Give yourself a hand on that. Here's the bottom line. Since God is all that there is, and God is absolutely within you and I, evidenced by the breath we use. I always hear people say, well, I don't know why God left me. Where is God in my life? I tell them, shut up and breathe. <laughs> if you feel that breath, God is with you. I don't care how much you mentally turn God off. As long as you're breathing, you got God in. It stands to reason that on a spiritually conscious level, there is no you and I. 
We share the same breath of life. Billions of us. That's how big God is. How little do you think God is? God is all that there is. And so if I'm breathing and somebody in China is breathing or somebody in the clan is breathing, somehow we are connected, yes? yes. My ego wants to hate and retaliate. Come on. Yes. But Spirit says you and I are one. Oh, come on, it got quiet on that one. It got quiet on that one. So as I do my spiritual work to be, well, let me rephrase that. As we do our spiritual work to be more loving, healthier, wealthier, and happy, we absolutely make a difference in the hearts and minds of the people who are around us who are ready to rise up to be another's keeper. Do you realize that you have your own world? Yes. Guess what? Say it with me. My I and my world does revolve around me. My world does revolve around me. Because you look at parents and people say, you think the world revolves around you? <laughs> Go back to them in your history and say, yeah, <laughs> guess what it does? And so this world that you've created of people, places, and things around you, you have an effect on that. I'm going to take this thing off. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> testing, testing. Yeah. Now, think about it. You are a difference maker. You think about those boys in, in the city. <laughs> Just like the boys in the in the movie and all the energy around that and how some of us can't watch that stuff and how some of us are affected by that stuff take a deep breath and rise a little bit higher to the understanding that God is still what all that there is I may not understand why I may feel what I feel but I'm gonna keep on breathing and saying, God is all there is, God is all. I don't have to know intellectually why. I only need to know spiritually that I raise myself high. I get myself to a higher perspective and I understand that God is all there is, love is all there is, and those who are doing whatever to whom have not remembered who they are. And so by you remembering who you are and showing up, as that difference maker, you make a difference in everybody else's world. Are you with me so far? Yes, yes. That's how it changes, baby. Yes. You can protest all you want, but until you get inside right. and readjust and realign, come on, right. to love, right. then all of it is just a bunch of wham, right. wham, wham. Right. <laughs> We're going to hear from Science of Mind Text from Reverend Chef. Joe? Oh, okay. Thank you for your flexibility this morning. We're in microphone heaven. <laughs> okay. This is coming from the Science of Modern Text. Other teachings from the New Testament. Ernest Holmes writes, Now are we the sons of God? This comes from 1 John 3, 1 through 4. Now remember, let's translate we are the sons of God, we are the daughters of God, we are the people of God, we are the children of God, but you know what the bottom line is? We are an expression of God. Say it with me, I am, I am an expression of God. The world does not know the Son of God. Material sense cannot recognize the spiritual. Spiritual things must be spiritually understood. God's love is complete in us, and that we are his sons. So physically in the physical world, we hear about things like the movie we hear every day. Many of us, of my age, we've been through all that. Can I get in so it is? And we lost friends a long time ago with no news reports. And, and, and so and so and so. But it is spiritual things are seen spiritually. Come on, somebody. Yes. Do you realize that we are spiritual beings having this human experience? Yes. So if I'm a spiritual being, I've got to rise up to my true self. Yes. Huh? Before I act out on my ego self. Or not. His sons, the sons of freedom and not bondage. Now, are we the sons of God? Not in the hereafter, but in the now. Take a deep okay. breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Feel how you feel when you take a deep conscious breath. 
and how the more you breathe deeply and move away from the chatter and the manipulation and the judgments in your mind, you start feeling better. That's freedom. Freedom from the dis-ease causing energy other than love. He goes on to say, not in the hereafter, but in the now. Are we just... In the when? In now. the now. In the when? Now. now. Are we just what we are and what we must be because of our true natures? True now. nature, true nature, true nature, true nature, a, an expression of God. Your true nature is an expression of God. That's the bottom line. See, the simple work of all this stuff is to return to spirit, to return to love. That's what it's all about. So you can ask yourself, what am I focusing on? And if you're focusing on the drama instead of the solution, you got five steps. What's your excuse? Now are we the sons of God. The birth of the soul into the light of spirit is an awakening to the realization that God has been with us all the time. All the time? All the time. Now are we the sons of God. Today is the day of complete salvation. Not when? tomorrow. Today. Today. Quit waiting for your ship to come in. Turn to your name and say, you are the ship. You are the ship. And guess what? You already in. Now, if you don't like the heart you in, change the way you think. Today is the day of complete salvation. Not tomorrow or the day after, but now. When? Now. Even if our hearts condemn us, we know that the spirit which gave the heart is greater than its gift. Hold it right there. Even though our hearts may condemn us, I translate in my own head to say, even when my ego makes me feel at fault. Anybody ever feel like that? Yes. Yeah. Even when your ego wants to seek approval from somebody else. Even when your ego thinks you're not good enough. Come on, somebody. Take seven deep breaths and remind yourself there's a presence and power within me that already won. God is greater than all human mistakes. And in God alone is there peace and happiness. You want to know the little mental health tool that I've learned by counseling and coaching people? And that is you've got to give yourself permission to make mistakes. So many of us, I was brought up in a family where you weren't supposed to make mistakes. And if you all played football or basketball or anything, you weren't allowed to make what? Mistakes. And even if you cried as a boy, that was a what? Mistake. Oh my God, you got categorized, you got demonized. Come on, somebody. We got to let go of all that stuff because God is still. God is natural goodness and eternal loving kindness. Who is born of love is born of God. For God Say, and I am born of love? I am born of love. Because I am born of God. God. So you need to write that down, put it on a yellow post-it, put it in your Ferrari or your Volkswagen, come on somebody, <laughs> on a mirror in your house, so that you can remind yourself who you truly are. Without love, nothing can be accomplished. Love it. With love, all things are possible. Love, love, love. The acronym, my acronym in the book for love is letting ourselves and others victoriously evolve. Oh, Woo! But you gotta let yourself evolve first. Come on, before you can let somebody else off your judgment hook. Letting evolve victoriously. Let's look at that word, victory, victor. The opposite of victim. Come on. We've got to get rid of this victim mentality. Come on, somebody. Because we are superior in our consciousness. Not to anybody else. Everybody can get it. The door is open. Turn to your neighbor and say, but you got it, baby. You got it. And when we love, our prayers are answered and the gift of heaven is made. Now let's clarify that. When we love, our gift is answered. But guess what? When you hate, that gift is answered too. Because there's only one law. And you are the director of the law. Do you know how powerful you are? Yes, I do. You are co-creator with God. As God created the world, you are creating your own world. Yes. What? Yes. The words of your mouth. That's right. That's right. And you want <laughs> The gift of heaven is life and not 
death, love and not hate, peace and not confusion. And when we enter into paradise through the gateway of love toward one another and toward God, love is greater than all else and covers a multitude of mistakes. There it is. Say it with me. I am. I am. Another's keeper. Another's keeper. In love. In love. Love overcomes everything and neutralizes all that is unlike itself. Love is God. That's here for every time. Love, we're not talking soap opera love. We're not talking bedroom love. We're talking agape love. Huh? That's how we become another keeper. By working on our own love for ourselves. How do we do that? By appreciating who we are and what we already have. Let me say, I'm already blessed, baby. I'm already highly favored, baby. I'm already In working on being another's keeper, the more work you do connecting your own consciousness with God's consciousness, using these tools that we teach and practice with, we become the keepers, the keeper of faith, the keeper of love, forgiveness, compassion, kindness, wisdom, and the joy of life as God's love through us. Yes? Yes. Yes, the benefits are tremendous for those of us who step up to the plate and hit home runs of inner healing, glorious awareness, and flawless forgiveness. So important is forgiveness, yes? yes. So important is forgiveness. People want to, you know, talk about when people get, got, some of our folks got shot in a church uh, down south somewhere. The next day people were on television talking about the, the killer was forgiven and people can't get that. Because spiritual things must be discerned spiritually. God is not about hate. You're invited to choose any way you wanted to. Don't get me wrong now. But love is love. Say no matter what. No matter what. Say again. No matter what. Repeat after me. I am, I am a reminder and an example, a reminder and an example that God's blessings, that God's blessings are truly ample. Are truly ample. Feel that. Yeah. Feel that. Yes. Feel that. The majesty of that within you. It's not about your ego. It's about what lets you go. Yes. Congratulations, spiritual family. Yes. You have now set the consciousness tone of electrified energy around yourself. That mindset which others are seeking for themselves and who you are. As another's keeper speaks so loudly, there's nothing left to say. All we do is remind those around us by our presence, and then we simply move on. Say move on. Move on. Turn your name and say, I got spiritual swag, baby. I got spiritual swag. Because I know who I am, and I know who I am. I got spiritual swag. And closing this morning as we move on from this gathering today, let us do so with a sense of empowered confidence through the working power of the Holy Spirit within who? All of us. The one spirit that keeps us united in being of service as another's keeper. Namaste. Amen.